up, Beanie fans, and welcome to another episode of Grade A Marketing meets Grade F Manufacturing, and F is for, you guessed it, fucking pathetic. Today's special in the how did this shit make it to the market sweepstakes are these Favero Crapioma pedals. That's right, these masterpieces are made in Italy by a company that apparently thinks making stadium scoreboards qualifies them to make cycling pedals because clearly if you can flash numbers on a scoreboard, you are a pedal genius. Last year, Favero had the brilliant idea to remotely disable a bunch of their pedals, forcing people to replace them. They claim it's not related to this piss poor product quality, but they've also threatened to sue me. How cute, because nothing says we're fixing our screw ups like an empty legal threat. Now, Favero might have a decent reputation with electronic fitness YouTubers like GP Llama and DC Raymaker for their accuracy, which is code for we don't completely disintegrate on the first ride, but when it comes to the actual mechanics of these pedals, they're about as reliable as a $10 toaster. Someone sent me in pictures of their failed pedals via Instacrap. After sharing those, I was bombarded with similar disaster stories. It's almost like Favero thinks isolated incident is just another way of saying we fucked up royally. Let's get into the nitty gritty of this. These are the Asio Machi pedals. They are to replace Shimano pedals with deep groove ball bearings. So if you're thinking about putting these in Dura Ace setups, you might as well fuck yourself right now. First up, the axle. The axle is hardened. Which is a fancy way of saying it's not made of total garbage. The threads, uh, I think they're 9 sixteenths of an inch. Uh, the drive is, yeah, it looks like it's recessed. Well, it is recessed and it may be broached. And I think it's broached. This big cylindrical thing houses the electronics. Give it a shake and it flashes like a goddamn Christmas ornament. It's been sitting there, still flashing away. Now, onto real shit show, the pedal axle. It looks like a cheap knockoff of a decent design, um, which was originally the time, but then Costello on a Trace Velo video <laughs> almost looked like a glorified copy of it, which makes me think these are possibly just glorified junk. But before we get any further, let me show you why our viewer had to replace these turds. There's nothing like so much play between the inner sleeve and the axle. It's like how oh, they forgot to make the thing fucking fit. So let's do a lift check. This is the Favero Asioma Shi axle. Um, this is, I think it's the right one. Might be the left, doesn't really matter. Not really. Um, this is like a, an axle within an axle. So this piece threads in and this is called a lift check. Colloquially, we call it a lift check in engineering. It measures the free play inside any sort of dynamic system, bearing system. So we've got the clock set up and I've locked this axle into my completely steel hardened vise. And now the purists will say that I shouldn't do that, but screw them. That's because this is quite hard and it will damage the threads. But for the purposes of this, it doesn't really matter. What you can see is I've basically zeroed it. And if we move it from left to right, that is how much play there is in there. So that's about 0.4 millimeters, which is 16 thousandths of an inch. That is quite a lot. Probably getting on for half a mil there. So this lock nut is reverse threaded, so it won't come loose when you are pedaling. So this keeps the sleeve in place, uh, which screws into the pedal. So let's take that off. So that's coming off left-handed, cack-handed. Here's a sleeve with a bearing so tiny, it's basically laughable. So most pedals use fairly robust bearings. This one's like the economy sized version of a bearing. It's like six mil. Now the Achilles heel is in here and it is this bushing right here. Now, it is a fucking awful choice. It's gonna wear out faster than your patience at the betting shop. The hardened steel, which this is, is gonna rip through it like it's made out of butter. 
Now, this isn't the worst piece of shit I've seen ever, but it's not far off it, mainly because of their attitude, because they accused me of being defamatory so that some poor chap on a production line doesn't get paid so he can't have his pasta in the evening. But this is, I mean, it's just shit. Look at the small size of the bearing in there. And then in here, you've got a bronze bushing. When you put that together, you just got steel against brass or bronze or whatever. It's just gonna wear it out. And there's a bit, I mean, I think this is hardened, but I can't actually be sure because if it is hardened, it's not that hard. Usually if it's hardened, you won't be able to take shavings off it. But that's a bit inconclusive. There's also a load of pickup around here. Um, if, I mean, if you're putting loads of power out, just look elsewhere, because these are fucking shit. Give a bit of context as to how fucking shit this pedal design is. I have brought to you one of the most popular types, the Look Blade. Uh, Keo pedals, this one's a ceramic one, but it doesn't really matter. This is the bearing from there. So the equivalent one in the Asioma is there. I mean, it's fucking tiny. <laughs> you can almost get the whole thing over it. Um, this axle is well and truly hardened. Uh, forget the pin. Yeah, you can't, you can't even scrape that one. This one is a bit it's definitely softer, without a doubt, it's definitely softer. And the other key big difference is there is a bit of a difference in setup of the bearing assembly. So the look uh, pedal has its bearing there, whereas the Asioma has the bearing on the end. But the big difference is this bushing in here, which is obviously bronze. In the look pedal, it doesn't have a bushing. It's got a proper needle roller bearing. So the low capacity on there is way higher. It also isn't gonna click uh, when you've got a bit of wear on it. 